Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to uh, get introduced to animating in Maya. And for this example, I will be using this yellow cone that I have here. The first thing I want to point out to you is that it is currently selected, and that is why we see its information here in the channel box. It's called Pcone 1, and its position in three-dimensional space on the translate x, y, and z is at zero. Its rotation x, y, z is set to zero, and scale x, y, z are all set to one, and visibility is on. Now, if I take my cone and I move it in world space, let's say I move it on the X translate, for example, you'll notice that the value updates in my channel box. Same goes for any rotations that I do, as well as scales. These values will update here. If I wish to set it back to 0, 0, 0 on the translate x, y, and z, I can simply type in that value. I can put the rotate values back to 0 as well, or the scale back to 1. This is the timeline representing time which I can scrub using my left mouse button. If I were to go to, let's say, frame 24 and move the cone, nothing happens. That is because I'm actually not animating yet. I'm going to set this cone back to zero. To animate, what I need to do is set keyframes. I have my object selected. I'm in my timeline here, and I'm going to bring it to frame one, the beginning of my animation. And what I will do is set a keyframe. So I'm going to navigate to this dropdown. And I'm going to go from modeling to animation. And then I'm going to go to key, set key. And I'll click that. What you'll notice is that in my channel box, these values are all indicated with this red mark here, as well as a red tick mark on frame one indicating that I have set a keyframe on frame one. Now let's watch what happens if I move my cone over here. Let's say I rotate it and I'll do some uniform scales and some non-uniform scales. And then I'll return to my timeline and scrub. Remember, I'm doing this with the left mouse button. Notice that it pops back into place now, uh, back to its original position. That is because it has a keyframe on it. But if I scrub in my timeline, our object is still not animated. To be animated, we need to have at least two keyframes. It needs to uh, have uh, one keyframe uh, where it has its values, and then a second one that it changes to. Now, in the timeline here, I am going to go to frame 24. Currently, I'm animating at 24 frames a second, meaning that in the timeline from frame 1 to frame 24 will equal one second of animation. Now, if I move my cone up on the Y translate, you'll notice that the value changes here. We've got a value now of 5.85. And I will set another keyframe. 
I will go to key, set key. Now, if I scrub in my timeline, we'll see that the cone will change from its first key on frame one to its second key one second later, 24 frames later. And it'll interpolate in between the two keyframes. In addition, we can also play the animation by clicking the play button here. I, of course, can animate any of these values here in the channel box. I'm going to scrub my timeline. Uh, let's say that this time, instead, I will go half a second later, so 12 frames. Uh, and that would be 24, let's see, 34, 36, on frame 36. And this time, I will move it on the x-axis over here. Now, if you remember, to set a key, we can go to key, set key. However, you will also notice that there is a hot key, and that is the letter S on your keyboard. So I'll use that this time. I will simply press S, and once again, you'll notice that we have a, a key frame here on frame 36. And if I scrub in my timeline, you'll see that from frame 1 to frame 24, it goes up on the y-axis from frame 24 to frame 36. So half a second later, it moves on the x-axis. So far, we've animated this cone on the x and the y-axis. Uh, of course, if we uh, wish to do so, we can also animate it on the z-axis. I'll set another keyframe by pressing S, scrub, uh, scrub through my animation to see that it is in fact animated. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out is that we uh, do not have to, of course, animate one axis at a time. If I wish to, I can move it on all three axes at the same time. And you'll notice as I scrub the animation that all three values are changing over time. Moving on to the rotation, we can rotate on the x axis, the y axis and the z-axis for our animations. Uh, if I wish to rotate on the x-axis, let's say, I'll grab the red handle here. If I wish to get an exact value, for instance, 180 degrees, I can type it in the channel box here and then press S to set a key. And as you can see, it is now animated on its rotate X from frame 56 to frame 66. We can rotate the other channels as well. Let's say I want to rotate on the Y axis and I'll also rotate that 180 degrees and I will set a key on that. And as you can see, that is also animated now. Then moving on to scale, we can set keys on, I can do a uniform scale, which will change all three values, and I can key that. Or we can do a non-uniform scale and key that as well. And finally, the last channel we'll look at in the channel box will be the visibility, which works a little bit different than these other channels. I'm going to uh, scrub to frame 100, and I will uh, set a key. I haven't made any changes, so everything is paused right now. And then I'll go to frame 
110. And on visibility, I'm going to turn it off. Currently, it's turned on. If I take 0 in my keyboard, it'll turn that value off. And I will key it. And the cone will disappear on frame 110. What I want you to notice here is that there is no interpolation on the uh, visibility. Visibility is either on or off. It's never going to be 50% visible or 25% visible. Uh, it's either visible or it's not visible. Uh, if we wished to do something where it faded instead, uh, we would have to do that differently, and I'll cover that in a later video. Let's take a look at the entire animation now. I'm going to scrub to the beginning of my animation, and I will hit the play button once again, and we'll watch the animation. <laughs> 